This ministry is saving lives through a message of hope. Listen to these statistics. More than 30,000 suicides occur in the United States alone in a year's time. 89 suicides a day, or one suicide every 16 minutes. As an educator who has worked with teens, I have seen how teens battle depression, and frequently their cries go unheard. Sometimes they don't even know how deeply hurt they are inside until they try to end the pain. I have walked with women who have lost their husbands to suicide. And today you will hear a message of hope and how God is saving people. And I have this wonderful, wonderful guest with me. Her name is Kristen Jane Anderson. Her book is called Life in Spite of Me. Kristen, thank you for being here today. Thank Welcome. you so much for having me. Thank you. So you were 17 years old. Yes. And you were depressed. Yes. A lot of different things have went wrong in my life. And about the year and a half beforehand, I lost three friends as well as my grandmother. I was being stalked by two young men and I was also raped by another, and I just had no idea how to handle that. I didn't know that I could go to God for comfort or wisdom or strength or understanding, so I tried to just handle it all on my own, but I spiraled down into a very deep and scary depression that I didn't even know I was in, and I started to struggle with suicidal thoughts. And then one night you were in a park. Yes. Was it a cold night? Was it like New Year's Day or something like that? It was January 2nd. January 2nd. And it was really cold outside, and I was struggling with whether or not I wanted to live my life anymore. I was really back and forth about it, and I didn't know if things were ever going to get any better. I felt like things were just getting worse and worse, and I didn't feel like I could handle the pain that I felt inside anymore. So once the train started to come, I made the impulsive decision to lay down on the track. And the police report says that 33 freight train cars went over me at 55 miles per hour. And what I remember when the train was going over me was I first felt it begin to suck me upward, almost into itself, because that's Mm -hmm. what should have happened. I should have basically been torn to pieces. But very quickly after that, I felt this force begin to push me down into the ground. And I really believe that was God just protecting me and saving my life. Yeah, as you have shared this story with others, you said a train engineer came up to you one time and said that it couldn't possibly be that that many train cars ran over you at that speed, that you could not possibly have lived through that. Yeah, he said only God could have kept you here. That wouldn't happen any other way. There's no other way I could have survived. Yeah. What a horrific experience for you. And But yet, suddenly there, the train has come and gone, and you're still here. Yeah, as soon as the train stopped, I remember just opening my eyes and unclenching my fists and trying to figure out what had really just happened. If Was I alive? Was I dead? Really, what had happened? And as I was looking around, I looked behind me to my right, and about 10 feet behind me on my right, I saw my legs. And I just knew they were my legs because they had these brand new bright white tennis shoes on them that I'd just gotten for Christmas. But it felt like this couldn't be happening, this can't be real, this has just has to be a horrible nightmare. So I crawled up from underneath the train to really try and figure out what had just happened. And when I looked at my left leg, it had been severed so high that I didn't even see anything there. Mm-hmm. So I turned my attention to my right leg, and it looked like it had been severed below the knee, but I really wasn't sure. So I took my hand, I ran it below where it had been severed. And in doing that, I unintentionally brought my hand up to my face, and I saw the blood. And that's when the pain really hit me, and I started crying harder than I've ever cried in my life. And I actually started crying for my mom like a small child would. Mm-hmm. But in that moment, just this incredible peace covered me, and I felt so comforted, and I started hearing the song Amazing Grace, like, over and over in my mind. So I thought I was dying, I must be going to heaven, but what I think was really happening is God was meeting me in that moment and showing me that he was with me, that he was there, and that he was going to help me. Really, I'd just been crying for my mom, but there's nothing that she could have done to help me. Only he could help me, only he could save me in these circumstances. And I remember just resting in that peace. Mm-hmm. waiting to die basically and the next thing I remember was feeling a firefighter come up to me and pull my hair behind my ear and he was stunned to find out that you were alive yeah he wasn't expecting me to be alive so if he found me he kind of stumbled back because I looked up at him and he wasn't expecting me to be alive 
I remember even in that moment I was kind of angry that somebody was finding me because mm -hmm. I wanted to still just die. Yeah. And how long did it take you? Because now suddenly you've survived your suicide attempt. And but you not only have survived it, you lost your legs. And so didn't that throw you into an even deeper depression? Weren't they concerned that you would try to take your life again? Yes, many people thought, well, if she didn't want to live her life with her legs, how is she going to want to live her life now? Yeah. And I struggled with suicidal thoughts and depression for probably the following three years after I lost my life from my suicide attempt. It was a very hard time. Mm -hmm. But eventually this couple that was friends with my sister came to have dinner with my family. And the husband of the couple was in seminary to be a pastor. And I remember just talking to him because I figured he knew the Bible more than anyone else in my life and I was really just looking for a lot of answers. I wanted to know what would have happened to me if I would have died and he told me that every single one of us were created to be in a personal and intimate relationship with God mm -hmm. but because of the sin and the wrong things that we've done we're separated from him but that's why Jesus died for us to forgive us of our sin to reunite us with God but there's a choice we have to make to accept Jesus to accept his forgiveness and let him lead our lives. And I grew up going to church my whole life, but I never knew that. And I, but I knew that what he was telling me was more true than anything I'd ever heard in my life. So I remember asking him to show me that in the Bible, and he showed me a lot of different verses, but the verse that stood out to me the most was John 14, 6. Mm -hmm. And that's where Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And I just knew that I never made a decision to accept Christ into my heart or my life for his forgiveness. And I knew that I didn't have a personal relationship with God. So sitting on the floor in my parents' dining room, I just prayed and I asked them to forgive me for everything that I'd done wrong. Even trying to take my life, I realized that it wasn't mine to take. And that was the night that I became a Christian and that was the beginning of a whole new life for me. So just praying that simple little prayer really truly did transform your life in spite of everything? Yes. I mean, things didn't just completely change overnight, but I started the more that I walked towards God, the more I felt like I was walking out of my depression and I started to experience more peace and more joy and just a love for life like I had never known before. And now you're a student at Moody Bible Institute and you have your own ministry. It is Reaching You Ministries? Correct. I started the ministry about a year after I started attending Moody. I just felt like that was what God was calling me to do, that's where he was leading me because he wanted me to help reach people, other people who are hurting, who are struggling, who are just struggling with suicidal thoughts as well as depression. And I just love doing that. I know that there's so much hope that people can find in Christ and I just want people to know that. Well, today there are some of you here sitting in the cathedral and there are some of you watching at home on television around the world and you have given up hope. Some of you are dealing with depression. We know that from what's going on in our world today. Depression is at an all-time high. Kristen, can you give the people a message of hope a minute? Yes. I just want you to know that no matter who you are or where you've been, God has an amazing plan for your life. There is so much hope for you. And if you just reach out to him and seek him with all of your heart, he will meet you there and he will help you and you would never be disappointed. I pray that you would um, see your need for Jesus and that you would accept him into your heart and just let him lead your life because nothing compares to doing life with him. Please don't give up. There is so much hope in Jesus. Look at that beautiful smile. So if you've prayed a prayer, if you've decided, right, even right this very minute, if you said, Jesus, forgive me, be the Lord of my life, save me from myself, <laughs> save me from this depression. If you prayed that prayer with us and said those words, even right now, call us, all new hope. We have a 24-hour life-saving uh, suicide prevention center right here in New Hope. Or you can contact Kristen at Reaching New Ministries. We are here for you so that you too can have life in spite of yourself. Thank you, Kristen, for what God is doing through you. We're so, so glad, glad he saved you. Thank you so God much. God bless you. God bless you.